Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has just been found guilty and sentenced to 19 years in prison in his latest trial on extremist charges. Alexei Navalny, Putin's poisoned and jailed uber critic, is in a race for survival against his nemesis, according to his team. Also in Russia, imprisoned, imprisoned opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been found. He's been found in a Siberian prison. Former British Army Colonel Hamish de Breton Gordon, thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. Now, we've seen so much news about Alexei Navalny in the last, you know, two to five years, but there's so many questions about who this is. So I want to ask you straight and simple, who is Alexei Navalny and why does he play a part in Vladimir Putin's story? Well, Alexei Navalny has been a real pain in the side of, of uh, President Putin for, for some time. He's been a key opposition leader for many years, uh, very much on the anti-corruption ticket. Uh, and uh, I think it's well known and appreciated that Russia is probably one of the most corrupt countries uh, in the world. Uh, he he really raised a pro provenance outside Russia in 2013 when he was first arrest arrested by the Russian state, given a suspended sentence, uh, allegedly for embezzling, um, and then campaigned against uh, Putin for, for many, many years and got the increasing ear of Putin and, and the Russian regime. He came to real prominence in August 2020 when um, traveling back from Siberia to Moscow, he fell ill on a plane, which then diverted to a place called Omsk and Navalny was treated. Subsequently, it was found that he had been poisoned with the deadly nerve agent Novichok which had been used on the double agent Sergei Skripal in Salisbury in 2018, from where I'm talking to you from. And miraculously, Navalny survived through a whole host of different reasons. And unbelievably, the Russians allowed Navalny to be taken on a private jet to uh, Berlin, where he was treated and survived, and then, uh, out of his own volition, returned to Moscow in February 2021, where he was arrested and he's in, been in jail ever since. Hamish, the, the average person could look at this situation and just think he's a guy who's been arrested and jailed purely for going up against Vladimir Putin. Could that be a correct assessment? Yes, it is absolutely right. Um, Putin is an autocratic, tyrannical leader of Russia, which a lot of people view as a terror state, especially what it's doing in Ukraine at the moment. And the Russian society is, is um, you know, this sort of taking out, assassinating uh, opposition people or people who oppose the Russian state is nothing new. Um, those of you old enough will remember a chap called Georgi Markov, who was uh, assassinated on Waterloo Bridge in London with a umbrella that had a tip of ricin, which is a deadly toxin, again, done by the Russian uh, secret service, uh, now called the FSB. We wind forward a bit to 2006, and again, another Russian opposition leader, uh, Alexei Litvinenko, was poisoned with uh, polonium-210, which is a, uh, a radiological isotope. And he died in London again. This was um, uh, act by the Russian security services and wind forward to 2018 and Sergei Skripal, the double agent, uh, was uh, attempt to be assassinated in my hometown of Salisbury. So this is nothing new. The, the, bo the bottom line is if you're Russian uh, and particularly if you're in Moscow, if you oppose the leader, Putin, uh, you, you will be taken out, you will be killed. Uh, and, and again, this is nothing new to Putin. Um, Stalin's great purges in the 1930s, 40s and 50s were exactly the same. Anybody who posed the leadership was taken out. It seems a complete chimera, anathema to us in the West and in, in this country, but that's the way the Russian state works. Hamish, going back to that original uh, accusation, I guess you could call it, that Putin and the Kremlin, I guess, poisoned Alexei Navalny in 2020 on that flight. How has Putin ever addressed that? Obviously, he would never admit it, but has he at least ever addressed it to the public? 
No, of course, um, the, the Russian state have, have denied it, as they do with all these things, uh, and uh, have, have come up with fanciful reasons why, why he was ill. Um, but, the, but there are a few facts that are irrefutable here. We now know that the poison was Novichok. Uh, Novichok is a very deadly nerve agent. Um, just a, a single molecule is enough to kill you. It's probably the most, most poisonous substance that man has ever made. And we know from investigations, not only by the British government, but also by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, after Sergei Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with Novichok, mm. that that Novichok is a Russian nerve agent. It's only made in Russia by the Russians and by the Russian state. And it could, couldn't have come from anywhere else. Um, it, the uh, poisoning of Navalny has all the hallmarks, the Russian Secret Service, the F FSB. So I don't think there's anybody outside of Moscow and outside of Russia, nobody is in any doubt at all that um, the Russian regime, and no doubt Putin, is responsible for this. But I expect Putin is surprised of all the fuss about it, um, where it's well understood in, in Russia, if you oppose Putin, um, you will be taken out. Um, mm. That's the way it works. So. Yeah, Putin's never admitted it, but I don't think there's anybody in the world except for Putin and his close advisors who don't think he's responsible. Mm. Well, on the note of Alexei Navalny being poisoned with a chemical weapon, this comes that came at a time after Russia declared that they didn't have any left in the country. That's absolutely correct. In uh, 2017, the, the Russians declared to the UN that they had destroyed all their chemical weapons and suggested that the Americans and others should do the same. A few months later, they then poisoned Sergei Skripal in the UK with the nerve agent Novichok. Um, subsequent, we've learned that uh, Russia still has an active chemical weapons program based around this uh, deadly nerve agent. Um, so quite apart from getting rid of their program, they've actually developed it, whereas others haven't. Uh, I think everybody has been fixated by the Russians' uh, nuclear weapons program and the threat of using tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine. But, but actually, probably the most dangerous weapon of mass destruction that the Russians have is their chemical weapons program. And um, they, they underwrote that by poisoning Navalny with it. Uh, and it's probably high time that the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, uh, which looks after the Chemical Weapons Convention, uh, investigates Russia again. We haven't seen Russia use its chemical weapons in Ukraine, but if things go really badly, um, they might well do that, and that could well impact us in Europe and in the UK. Well, Alexei Navalny's been jailed since last February, but last month his team claimed to have had lost contact with him for two weeks, which we then found out was because he was being moved to an Arctic prison in Siberia. Why did this happen? Why was he sent to this, you know, such a isolated prison in the middle of nowhere? Is it some sort of further punishment? Well, well absolutely. Um, Navalny, since uh, he returned to Moscow in uh, February 2021, um, he's been in jail, but he has had contact with the outside world. And there are a lot of people who follow him and uh, you know, a lot of people who secretly, you know, want him uh, to, to lead Russia and, and, and rise up and, and depose of Putin. But uh, that's not the way it works in Russia. Um, it was only in May this last year now, 2023, that um, he was in front of the court again and given a 19-year sentence. Um, so he's uh, he's 47 now, 48, I think, fairly soon. So he's unlikely to get out of jail in these means until his 70s. But no doubt, you know, the Russian or Putin's plan is he never gets out of jail. Mm. Now, it, it might sound a bit in Congress, but there is a general election coming up in Russia in March in a few months' time. Um, nobody expects anybody except Putin to win. And except, you know, if Putin doesn't get at least 99% of the vote, people will be very surprised. Um, mm. There were two people who were announced as, um, as opposition to Putin today standing against him. Uh, very few people have heard of them and they haven't got a chance. <laughs> But I think um, with Navalny still communicating to people and around the world, 
Um, Putin really wanted to absolutely shut him up. So sending him to this penal co colony uh, up in the Arctic uh, appears to me the way that they're going to do this. Um, uh, it's absolutely Putin's desire to, to silence him. He's he's tried to kill him once and that hasn't worked. Um, and now he he is, uh, you know, obviously going to put him in the most dreadful place po possible. You know, no doubt as a as an example to anybody else who thinks oh. they're going to try and uh, go for the top spot and unsaddle Putin, which, which does seem virtually impossible. Well, on that note, Hamish, is the treatment and the outcome that Alexei Navalny has found himself in this situation, is it all in all just a message to Russians from Putin to not go against the government or that there will be consequences? Is he kind of the, the... They're making an example of him, if so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Putin sees himself very much as a hard man. Um, his background, he was a Secret Service agent in the KGB, which then became the, the FSB. Uh, and uh, some people remember pictures of him a few years ago with his top off on horseback and hunting. You know, he sees himself, uh, I like, he likes to think he's sort of James Bond of Russia. Um, and he also, as that strong man, wants to make sure that nobody else is encouraged to question him. Uh, Navalny was allowed in, in the sort of more liberal days, and that might sound like an oxymoron in Russia, uh, more liberal days uh, in the last decade. Um, Navalny was allowed around Russia and allowed to travel. He had a lot of supporters and, um, you know, got, got an awful lot of airtime. Oh. But uh, Putin obviously decided in 20, August 2020, when he ordered his assassination, that he was becoming too much of a threat. And uh, he's, you know, Navalny survived that, even survived in jail. Uh, but Putin, presumably with the so-called sham election coming up in a few months' time, wants to make sure that absolutely Navalny is silenced and sent off to the frozen wastes of the north. Well, is there any word on how Navalny's actually going, how he's being treated inside these prisons, even before and after his new one? Well, it's, it's very difficult to say um, because, you know, he, he is so tightly controlled. Um, Navalny does have teams outside uh, Russia who, who keep people up to date. And there was an excellent documentary uh, made of him called Navalny, uh, which, which won an Oscar um, last year, uh, produced with the help of the uh, open source investigative site Bellingcat, um, and, and they keep eyes on him and get as much information out as possible. We understand he's in solitary confinement most of the time. He has very little contact with the outside world um, and, and must be living a miserable existence. Mm. Uh, you know, he 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 decided to go back to Russia. He could have stayed in in Berlin in 2020, 2021. But uh, the mark of the man, he decided to go back and try and be that voice of opposition in Russia. But uh, uh, we know, and we, those of us who follow, looked at Russia for many years know that that is just not allowed. If you speak out against the leadership, um, you are silenced, usually assassinated. In this case, you know, Navalny seems to be the, the person Putin cannot kill. So instead, he's tried to silence him by sending him to somewhere like the Arctic where people just can't get hold of him. Mm. I mean, he could be considered a hero to a lot of his followers, I guess, returning to Russia. Just finally, Hamish, what is next, do you think? Is there a chance at all that Navalny could be released before his sentencing is up? Or is there any reason to believe that other government agents could get involved and try and broker a deal, whatever it may be? Well, I, I think in Navalny's case, his his only hope is, is the death of Putin. Um, and I expect it's the only hope for an awful lot of people in Russia. With Putin gone, there will be a new regime in place. Um, it might not be any better than Putin, but that, that is Navalny's hope, that uh, he might then get released, um, he might be exiled. Um, at least then he would uh, he would be alive and be with his family and, and, and have a voice. So I think while Putin still is in the Kremlin, there is very little hope for, for Navalny. So... You know, that is his only future, the death of Putin. Mm. 
You might be waiting a bit for that. Hamish, DeBrett and Gordon, thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure.